G'day viewers, I'm Andrew McGovern. I'm here with me good mate Tom Halibos. Tom and I are going to show you guys hopefully over the next few hours how to catch some fish on soft plastics. Soft plastics have taken the Australian fishing tackle industry by storm, but I think one of the most underutilised techniques is actually using softies off the beaches. It's so simple, all you need is a 7 foot spin rod, 10 pound braid, spool of short leader, bum bag full of jig heads and some pre-rigged soft plastics and you're ready to go. Tom and I are going to primarily be targeting trevally, salmon and tailor. Mate, you ready to go fishing, Tom? Mate, can't wait. Let's get into Look, it. We've been talking enough. We've got a bit of cloud cover coming over. Don't know if the camera can pick it up. We've got a gutter down there and I can, I'm sure I can actually smell fish in the air. There's, yeah. there's something happening, yeah. mate. Let's go get amongst them, man. Let's go. right eh? Right here, mate. See, I reckon a pod's just come through. Yeah, I'm in this time. I'm in this time, rock solid. Tom just got a fish. I dropped mine right at the edge here. Tom's chucked out again next cast, and he's hooked up, dropped his, and I've hooked up on a good fish, and he's smoking me. Because we haven't got much in the way of features here, it's an ideal beach to be walking up and down prospecting with lures. I reckon they're coming past in pods. Tom's on again. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a better fish. Probably getting up to about a kilo and a half, two kilos. Quite a good fish. Really on the job now. We've just found a little pod. That's four fish we've got. Tom's just landed another one. We'll get the plastic out of this bloke and let him go. One other good thing about plastics is you don't do too much damage to the fish. You can see that single hook. Fish is in really good nick. No, done no damage to its gills or its eyeball or any of the key parts of the fish. Those sort of wounds around the mouth will heal pretty quick. That's a cracking South Coast salmon on a soft plastic. That's what I'm talking about, baby. This one's going back. I'll go get another one. How good's this? Oh, yep, 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 nice fish. Isn't it amazing, we just changed. We've been fishing four inch lures, not a bad fish this one. Not quite as big as the other one, but we've been using four inch lures. We changed our plastics to a three inch and all of a sudden we've started getting fish. Now I don't think it matters where, what your situation is, you've got to match the hatch. This fish is just about done. Okay, soft plastics on the beach, it's pretty simple stuff. It's almost as basic as you get. And the best thing about with soft plastics, you don't have to worry about burly, you don't have to worry about bait. You don't really have to worry about getting your hands dirty unless you catch a few fish. Sandbows are probably your bread and butter fish that you're trying to chase. Tom and I just been walking the beach this morning. Tom's still fishing away there. I'll pick this one up on a little pre-rigged three inch Berkeley mullet. That's imitating exactly what the fish have been eating. We caught a couple of fish just on first light and they spewed up. The little, they look like little white baits, which are exactly that size. You've got the hidden weight inside, so it's quite easy to cast. And on a light little rip setup like this, it's quite, quite straightforward. You don't need a lot of tackle when you're fishing the beach with soft plastics. Straightforward seven foot spin rod. A uh, nice little reel with a good drag, probably want about 150, 200 metres of braid. Braid's much better because you get that better feel, everyone knows that now. So you've got that no stretch. I use about a, uh, a rod length of monofilament or fluorocarbon leader. I don't think it really matters in the beach whether you use fluorocarbon or not. And then, pretty simple, a couple of extra lures in your, in your bum bag, a couple of packets of, of lures. If you don't want to use the pre-rigged ones and a small tackle box with a couple of jig heads and really you can walk the beach for till the day's end. In New South Wales there's no size limit on salmon so you can take, take them at any size whether you want them small or big but you, um, there's, a, there's a bag limit of five per angler. Okay what we've got here folks is one of the biggest things that a lot of people misinterpret on a beach is for features and where to fish and a lot of the time it's only subtle small things that you should be looking for so on a day like today where we've got a relatively calm beach 
you can see up here there's a little bit of white water and foam and some waves forming. What that's doing, that's over shallow water and that's a sandbar. So you can see these waves there now forming a, that white water. And you'll see this wave coming up now and it's breaking over the sand. So on this side you've got deeper water and that's where we're fishing. We're fishing along this edge. So there's a sandbar there that potentially is getting water washed across it as the tide fills and then it spills off that sandbar and washes nutrients like invertebrates and little mullet and other little bits and pieces like pippies and shells and so on which the fish can feed on. So sometimes it's only subtle things and on a day like today when there's not a lot of features that's a classic example of tides right up. But you can see it quite clearly how those waves break and then if you look over to this section there's no waves breaking at all which means it's a fairly deep uniform area. And that's where theory is right, but I think a lot of people underestimate looking for subtleties in the beach. So if you see things like that, keep that in mind. Okay, with my soft plastics fishing, as I've said before, I'm just using a seven foot graphite rod, fairly fast taper. So I've got a nice so soft tip, heaps of guts around the metal, so I can sub subdue a nice big salmon if I happen to hook one. All I've got there, as you can see, I've got a short double. I've got a bimini twist, 10 to 15 turn bimini twist. Then I've got an Albright, and I've got from there to my lure. So I've got about a rod length of 20 pound Berkeley Vanish fluorocarbon leader. It's really straightforward. The only reason I use a double just increases the knot strength. My main line here is green Berkeley fire line. That's eight pound. You can fish up to 10, 14 if you wanted to. I found eight to be a good size. You know, that's, that's a heavy enough breaking strain to be able to subdue big three, four kilo sambos. So short double, 20 pound leader, it's dead easy. Enough talking for me, I want to have another cast. One of the things when you're um, working soft plastics off the beach is don't be afraid to actually let them sink. So don't just cast out and as soon as your bait hit, your lure hits the water, you start cranking in. Don't be afraid to let it sink for you know a good 10 15 seconds particularly if you haven't got much current let it sink right down the other thing you can do is when you're retrieving is mix up your speed of your retrieve speed it up slow it down you get halfway in and you're in the middle of a deep hole let it just stop let it sink you can even disengage the bail arm let it sink down a lot of time when you're using those well balanced pre-rigged shads as they're swimming down the tail will flutter and a lot of time you'll get a strike so it's, it's probably a good idea to actually cut your line as it's going down you can see the lines going out there I okay, go let it drop for a few few meters take up the slack line and then continue winding bit of a misconception a lot of people think with with spinning is you got to spin fast you don't in a lot of ways that's actually can be detrimental to your fishing just got to be a nice constant speed because these, these new soft plastics are just so lifelike, lifelike that all you need to do is just a constant speed with your fish swimming along. Another really good retrieve that you can do is actually just a, as you're winding in, just a lift. Because what you you got, your, your lure's swimming down, then you're lifting it up. So it's swimming in like a, an S shape. It's quite effective because you're actually lifting it up. A lot of the time you'll get that, you're, you're giving that message to the salmon or the tailor that the bait's getting away. A lift, wind, and then another lift. It's not too difficult, but the salmon and tailor love that type of retrieve. So one of the keys when you are fighting fish, don't walk right up the beach and fight them. Fight them down near the edge. Now the reason is, is they've got to fight the surf and the current and everything when you're fighting down near close. Now the other problem you're going to have with light line is landing fish. So hopefully this, this bloke will do the right thing and stay on the hook. But what you've got to do when you're using light line, you obviously can't muscle a fish up because what's going to happen 
is the pressure of that wave going back is going to increase the weight of that fish substantially. So you've got to use the waves to wash the fish in. So I'm just going to, he's getting sort of close now, he's just in that last breaker. Now if I try to muscle him in now, he's going to probably break me off. Because he's just on that little lip there, that's where it drops down. So I'm going to move down and try to actually use the wash to wash him in. That salmon came into that last wave there, and I actually used it to sweep the fish in. Now that what I'm doing is I'm using the wave to my advantage to help me beach the fish, because with that turbulent white water, the fish gets a little bit disorientated, doesn't know where it is, and then you've got that opportunity to actually use, use your line and use a sideways rod action just to sweep them up on the beach. <laughs>